John Russell from Culpepper. I'm going to do something I never really do, especially these days, because I think I've gotten smarter. I'm going to go ahead and give you a politician a compliment. And I do truly mean this because what happens is, is a lot of people run for office and you ran for mayor this past year. And a lot of people run for office and that's when there's a lot of attention on them. That's when, you know, it's popular for a politician to do something charitable for them to show a side of themselves that they want people like. And then what usually happens is whether they win or lose, that side of them goes away. And especially if they don't get the victory they want, they kind of disappear. And then you start to wonder whether or not that was an authentic side of them they were actually showing. You're one of the few people I've seen run for office. And the person that you meet in town, the person that you meet face to face when the cameras are away is the same person that you meet on the campaign trail. And even though your race ended, that didn't stop John Russell, the philanthropist, John Russell, the community volunteer, John Russell, the entrepreneur, from continuing to do all the things that you do. And with um, your current project, the Kelly Street Boxing Club, when I saw you doing this, I was like, one, I got to know why. One, because it's cool. Two, because you don't stop working. You're, you're, you're like an energizer bunny. You just keep working on these projects. So, so what I want to know up front and, you know, definitely just jump into this so the listeners understand. Um, I, I saw you post about this probably a, a couple months ago. You wanted to go ahead and start a boxing club for young men who come from fatherless homes. So that way they have somewhere to go learn learn something new, but also develop the other skills that come with learning how to be an athlete, learning how to grow up and be a man. And as somebody that grew up in combat sports, you know, it, it's one of those things that immediately called out to me. I'm like, this is this is freaking cool. I want to be part of it. I want to know more about it. So what what kind of led to this evolution? Well, I also can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay. I want to also uh give you a compliment too uh you know it's you and i've been friends for a while and uh you know when we launched the the fundraising aspect of uh, this gym uh you were the first in line to donate money you put your money where your mouth is and i just wanted to let you know uh, how grateful i am for that um yeah so uh yeah we uh i started a uh, a nonprofit organization called uh, identity culpepper and basically what it is, it's a, it's a, it's a nonprofit for youth and entrepreneurs, both social entrepreneurs and, uh, and business entrepreneurs. Uh, we've been doing a lot of this kind of thing here on our property uh, here in town where we'll have people come in and start businesses or organizations, even churches, and, uh, and launch them into existence. And, and it really is uh, my wife and I, it's our heart. It's, it's our ministry, if you will. Uh, to to uh, allow people the freedom, you know, because a lot of times, you know, when people go to start a business or an organization, uh, they uh, they have the overhead cost of renting a space, then they also have the government breathing down their necks, and and just have a lot of a lot of things that are are um, are hindrances uh, to them to to seeing their dreams come true. And uh, so we're very fortunate at our, at our home here at Libertas Manor. Uh, we're a little over two acres downtown in Culpeper. And, and so, uh, you know, we just keep going. And uh, the next evolution of this thing is going to be the Kelly Street Boxing Club. And it's going to be for young men ages 7 to 17, uh, primarily from fatherless homes. Uh, they won't all be, but most of them will be. Um, we actually have almost a couple of our younger uh, classes almost filled already. We're going to be running 30 uh, young men through here every semester. Uh, so um, that'll be, uh, and they can continue on past, you know, and do more than one semester if they want to stick with it. Uh, but basically what we're going to be doing is 50 minutes of boxing instruction uh, and teaching them the basics and then, you know, and see if it's something they want to develop. Uh, and then we'll be doing uh, about 30 minutes of life skill training, like, you know, how to change a tire, how to patch a tire, how to change oil, how to chop wood, you know, how to, 
you know, uh, how to tell what direction you are out in the wilderness. I mean, by looking at the moss on the side of a tree, you know, just different life skills that a lot of fathers would be teaching their sons, but because the fathers aren't in the home, um, you know, this gives us the opportunity to do that. So it's something that, uh, you know, I, I come from a father. So my, my father abandoned uh, my mother and my, my um, sister and myself when I was seven years old. Uh, later in life, he came back uh, into my life and it ended very well. Uh, but most of my formative years, I, I had no father in the house. And, uh, and so this is uh, something that's very personal. Uh, for me, and uh, you know, and I think from the beginning it was really a God thing. We, uh, I came up with this idea last summer, and I really didn't know kind of what to do with it. I don't have much in the way of boxing skills and and whatnot, and but I but I have this two car detached garage, the back of the property, that I just looked at it one day and felt like this is supposed to be a boxing gym. Well, it looks and, like Mickey's gym from Rocky, so you got the aesthetic yeah, down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we're using the. You know, I'm sitting in here now. This is uh, what we're doing. Um, we've got some of the bags hanging up and, and we got more coming and, and uh, working on the outside of the building and, and getting that all ready. We're going to open on St. Patrick's Day. And uh, so, yeah, so I was uh, when I was campaigning I, uh, for mayor, I was downtown. Uh, I think I just shot a commercial. And uh, this guy walks by with a couple of dogs and he's like, oh, you're John Russell. Good to meet you. And we got to talking and he's like, hey, let me send you an email. I have this idea. You know, when you run for mayor, everyone has these ideas, right? Of the things they want to do in the town. Uh, but this guy sent to me, it was a pro forma and uh, it was for a boxing gym and a youth mentorship program. And this guy's legit too. He's a, he's a fighter. He, uh, he's a retired uh, DEA agent. Um, he also uh, works probation right now. And so uh, the fit was perfect and the timing was perfect. And uh, so as soon as I, I read that pro forma, I reached back out to him and said, hey, we need to talk because uh, here's where I'm, what I'm going, where I'm going. And I've been you know, looking for someone like you. And um, so, I mean, this guy, <laughs> this guy has like a, had like a, a signed letter by Rudy Giuliani, you know, endorsing his work with youth and, and boxing and all this kind of stuff. So, um, so it worked out really well. So That's we're wild. looking forward. To, yeah. We're open, looking forward to opening St. Patrick's day. We'll probably launch our first class around April 4th and uh, we'll run two months straight and then do a summer camp. And then hit it again two months, uh, September, October, in the fall. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's moving right along. Right now we're raising money uh, for the, uh, the upgrade of the building. Uh, it's just, you know, cosmetic stuff and a uh, little bit of a, some structural stuff, but nothing uh, major. So it's, uh, it's, well, I think we'll be ready. Uh, just got to get some warmer weather uh, so we work outside. Yeah, totally. I, what what really uh you know re reached out to me when when I saw this project specifically is that I think um I think combat sports whether it's you know like karate or boxing or whatever I think a lot of them get get a bad reputation and um you know I think in our society today this idea of violence you know even controlled violence is, is still looked down upon it's seen as savage it's seen as brutal it's seen as you know like you know human cockfighting as some people used to say in new york when they were trying to ban uh the ufc i um you know i i grew up in an active duty military family and you know my my dad was deployed a lot and i was bullied in school constantly and i was never much of an athlete but my mom really wanted to make sure i could defend myself and my brother as well. Uh, my, my brother's a first degree black belt in Taekwondo and he, he's in tremendous shape. But I mean, the big thing for him was it built a confidence that wasn't there, especially as a, as a homeschool kid. So, I mean, having one, you know, being surrounded by other people who come from different walks of life, it's different than other sports because in other sports, you have to have like a, a general interest in the sport, whether you're talented or not. With, with martial arts, everyone just wants to not get their asses kicked. And I think that was the one 
grounding thing that, you know, regardless of where people came from, their background or whatever, that was the one thing that really united us. So we did, um, you know, martial arts, you know, as a practice and competitively for, for many years. And, you know, when, when I joined the army a bit and then I got injured and stuff, I just stopped. And, you know, for the past uh, five, six months, I've been uh, training in Brazilian jiu-jitsu and judo. And it's just been, it's been great for me health wise, but what I really missed was the community aspect. I, I needed mentors in my life. And now even as an adult, it was still something that was part of me. You know, you can't, you know, fighters aren't born. I think fighters have to be, you know, people that are in a position where it's like, this is just part of my life now and I'm choosing to do it because it's, it's rough. But I think what's great about boxing, and I think this is why, you know, I, I wish more young men could get involved in it, you know, as, as a sport, whether they want to do it competitively or a hobby, is one, you don't need much to get involved with it other than gloves and some workout clothes. So anybody, regardless of their income background, can start boxing or start fighting generally. Yeah. And, and secondly, it's just one of those things. There's something about fighting that is inside people. It's not that we want to be violent. It's not that we want to go out and just destroy people. But it's something about men. If you want to be a lover, you've got to be a fighter. If you want to be somebody that's well-rounded, I think having the basic ability of how to know, you know when to pull a punch and when to go through, it, it's more than just that aspect. It's about life. It's about understanding when to pull back. It's about understanding when to go through. And, um, you know, that, that was the first thing that jumped out to me because I'm hoping that, you know, there, there's a child out there like me who is in need of that guidance, you know, whether, whether they're getting it from home or not, and they can have an opportunity to do something that they're often told not to do, which is to throw a punch in a controlled, safe environment where they're going to know the implications of that, but they're going to learn a lot in the same process. Well, you're right. And I think it's important that the life skills mentorship aspect couples the boxing as well, uh, because, you know, our, our guiding uh, scripture, if you will, is as much as it depends upon you, be at peace with all men. Um, and I think that really sums it up, you know, because you're you're training these boys in boxing skills, but you're also at the same time reinforcing peacefulness and reinforcing um, self-governance. And, and those are, are things in our society that are really lacking. You know, we li I live in a, in, a, in a unique neighborhood on, on one side of our property, on the street, on one side of our property, we have some of the richest people that live in town, live on one side. But when you go to the other side of the street, I've got drug dealers. Eight years ago, I had a drive-by shooting. Uh, last New Year's, I had a young man, a young teenager murdered. Uh, by his, by a, a, an acquaintance of his uh, down the street. Just uh, two weeks ago, we had uh, uh, someone implicated in uh, smuggling guns for drug cartels, not three blocks from the house. Um, you know, so this is, um, this is prime fertile ground for what we're going to be doing. And, uh, you know, the, if someone, if something doesn't intervene in the lives of these young men, uh, there is just, you know, our slogan for the gym is, uh, is uh, giving young men a fighting chance. And, uh, and that's, that's really what we're seeking to do uh, is to give them an alternative and, you know, an outlet for, you know, their hurts or their, their rage, you know, but at the same time, how do you, you know, you've got a function in society and you can't be controlled by that. So how do you, how do you, how do you measure that? And I think that takes a, it takes a, you know some men that have been there that can teach that and show them you know that uh, that that peace is is rather the the it should be the norm and not the exception, right? There, some of my so, some of my mentors that I met and you know gained through the through the army were some of the most violent people I've ever encountered. They're some of the most violent people you would ever meet. But if you didn't know that aspect about them, I mean, they're, they're fathers, they're husbands, they're, they're peaceful men, but they understand that, that part of themselves that is capable of committing, you know, real devastating violence if need be. And I think, um, you know, for, for many, for many young people, especially with, with the pandemic and everything the last couple of years, a, a lot of those 
local institutions failed them. Uh, Boy mm-hmm. Scout troops stopped meeting up. YMCA's stopped meeting up. Church groups stopped meeting up. The things that were an outlet for kids, whether they came from a stable, you know, happy home, and this is just something they did, or this was just, you know, in some sad cases, just glorified daycare for some kids. You know, that, that aspect of stability where it was outside of going to a public school where it's like, here, you're going to learn something, and we're hoping you have fun. You know, that, that got taken away. And the thing I've seen from from many young people that that go to the academy I go to and across other, you know, like uh, jujitsu gyms across the Wisconsin, the Milwaukee area where I'm at now is that, um, you know, they, they came to fight because they wanted to fight. They wanted to be tough dudes. But what they came for was stability. And, um, you know, I think the one thing that really has impacted a lot of men has come from you know schools for example where you know get, getting into a tussle with your friends even some rough horse play I mean that that aspect of rough play is incredibly important for developing young children but it's also something that's important for for older kids and for even some adults it's that ability of knowing that I can get into a physical and controlled altercation of somebody but I one I know it's going to stop Two, I know this person isn't going to kill me. And three, I'm, I'm getting better as I do it. And I think as we, you, you know, I, 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 I might as well just use the term. There was uh, somebody who said it's the pussification of America. I'm not going to go that far and say that was happening. But when you remove that aspect and you just say, oh, no, this is wrong because that's inherently violent. It's like, well, well yeah, it is inherently violent, but it's not wrong. When, when you announce this, um, did you get any pushback from parents? I mean, I could, I can only imagine what some, what some, you know, parents may say. The single moms lining, uh, lining up to get their boys involved. Um, that's, that's what I've got. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, there's just nothing for them, especially for low income. Uh, you know, that's the other aspect of this. Everything we're doing is going to be on a, on an income basis. So, you know, from zero income to 50,000, you're only going to pay 25 bucks a month to have your child learn out of box and have life-saving skills, you know, and life skills and stuff. And, um, you know, so, you know, that, you know, the, I, I get what you're saying and I get the, I get where, you know, media and culture would have us believe society is going. Uh, but, you know, for us, you know, rugged, rugged endeavors build identity. And, uh, and that's, you know, that's what we're trying to instill. I, you know, I don't talk about a lot about kind of what we do, you know, here at the house for some cases, but, you know, we, uh, recently took in a woman from a, 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 um, a battered, uh, she was a battered wife and, uh, actually did an extraction. I had to go in and get her while the husband was home and, and got her in the car and, and drove off. It was pretty, uh, pretty intense, uh, Christmas Eve. And, uh, she's been staying with us since. And, uh, I was riding with her and, and one of the things that she said really struck me. She's like, you know, I was put up for adoption when I was three, year old, three years old because my birth parents, you know, uh, put us in a shed and locked us in there. And we were malnourished. And, and then the next family that adopted her, that took her in, was also had, you know, uh, rage issues. And, and, and then she ended up getting married and she on, was on her second marriage. And the men that she had married were abusive. And it was because she had no identity. Her identity was wrapped up in those people that were around her growing up. And she carried that identity into those relationships. And, and basically the same type of abuse just kept going. Um, and so, you know, for us, it's about building identity. And, and, and yeah, it's for young men. And it's, and it's something I think is, is needed. You know, our big annual fundraiser is going to be in September is going to be a professional rodeo. Okay, so <laughs> it's, uh, you know, we're laying the groundwork for that right now. I'm in negotiation with a rodeo company and we're going to bring them into the fairgrounds. And uh, we're going to have a big, it's going to be a big fundraising event. Um, and uh, it's going to help, you know, fund this gym and this program uh, for a while. And we're going to do it every year. It's going to be an annual event. Uh, but again, rugged pursuits build identity. 
And, uh, and that's what these boys need to be see, you know, that, you know, the, the tough stuff in life doesn't have to define you, uh, but it can, it can help um, guide you um, uh, to becoming a better person. And, uh, and so, you know, that's, that's what we're really driving home is the sense of identity and giving them an identity of their own. I went through um, a, a public high school when, when I was living back in Fairfax and uh, Fairfax County public schools is like the number one, like best funded, best, best academic, um, you know, uh, public school system in the country. I don't know if they can maintain that title, but that, that's how it was when I was going through school. And mm -hmm. uh, what was always, what, what I always found curious was that they started busing in children from lower income communities from Prince William County to attend some FCPS schools. And it was intentionally done because some of the Prince William schools were overflowing. And, you know, some parents just really fought for their kids to go to those F FCPS schools because they're like, if we can't get our kid in here, we know that he's going to fail here. And uh, while on, on the outside of things, some, some administrators and some teachers and some local you know, bureaucrats, whatever, they, they always saw it as, oh, look what we're doing. We're doing this to help these young kids who, you know, some of them are immigrants. Some of them need help speak English. They come from, you know, broken homes and stuff. Look at us. Look at what we're doing. And uh, they, they would do that when the reporters would come. But then it's like in school, in the programs, the, you know, the, the whole personality changed. And I'll never forget uh, one teacher. I, I heard two teachers talking, and they were talking about some, uh, some you know, I think they were El Salvadorian children. And they were like, well, you know, we, we have to do this, and we have to keep this up. The, the kids are just broken, and they'll always be broken. And hearing that, I was like, that's, that's really damning. Like, that's a very deliberate statement. A person is broken. They'll, they'll always be broken. And mm -hmm. I find that with children that, that, you know, especially when it comes to like children's charities and stuff like that, people, you know, they, they'll say, oh yeah, we need to help the kids. We need to, you know, like adopt orphans and take care of kids who can't read and stuff like that. But then when you really get into it, it always becomes a bit touchier because it's like, if, if I, I can help these kids today, but am I setting them up to actually succeed and do well tomorrow? Or are they just going to go back into their environment and lead broken lives? Yeah. Yeah. It's, I think we, we have to sew into as many as we can and sew into them, um, you know, good things, things that have been lost in our culture and, uh, and uh, strong things and um, uh, big ideas, bigger uh, view of life um, and, uh, and really hone in on the talents and the abilities that a lot of these kids have, but never had the chance to, to bring them forward. Right. And, uh, you know, I probably, the, the only blowback that I get back to your earlier question, the only blowback that I've gotten is that we're not opening this up to girls. And, um, it, we're not because that's not what I was called to do on this particular mission. This particular mission is for boys. Um, we'll have ability for groups uh, to come in here and, and, and to rent this place out um, when we're not doing boxing instruction. And I, and I know for certain that there are people coming in that are going to train, you know, Jiu-Jitsu or, or, you know, uh, Krav Maga and, and all those things are gonna be open uh, to, um, to women and to girls as well. So, you know, there's gonna be other things like that, but this particular, uh, outreach and this focus uh, is is for young boys because you just don't see a lot of it out there to help them. Um, and yeah. I I feel that you know when when it, when it comes to the question of whether or not you know more things need to be you know co-ed and intermingled, like I'm I'm certainly for women doing things with boys. I mean, th there comes a times where sometimes it's more appropriate to be separate. Like you know, for mm -hmm. for me doing Boy Scouts growing up, some of the some of the shortest periods of my life going camping, going on trips were some of the moments where I had the most development because men and women develop and grow differently. 
and sometimes to understand ourselves, we need to be with other people who are really in the same situation as us, especially during that, you know, teenage era where everything just gets really confused. But right. I mean, you know, often I'll give I'll give the feminist critique one point. I'll say that a lot of problems that we're seeing with American families do fall on men. I mean, I, I was uh, I was out the other day in uh, near uh, South Milwaukee, and I had to interview a parent. Um, right now, uh, Milwaukee public schools have gone to virtual learning until January 18th. And we reached out to parents, discuss, you know, what's it like dealing with this right now? This is not convenient. What are your thoughts? So I met with, with a young single mother. She has uh, four, four kids, one daughter, three sons, and uh, she's unemployed. She lost her job because she refused to take um, a vaccine, which she felt, you know, she, she, didn't, she didn't feel comfortable taking it. She didn't think it would end there. And because of that, uh, she lost her job. So now... Uh, she's not collecting any type of unemployment. She didn't want to do that, but she's worried about whether or not she'll be able to go out for interviews because now she has to take care of her four kids, three of which are school aged. Now they're doing virtual learning. So now they need the mom in the house more often. And, um, you know, as I was sitting down with her and speaking, I noticed that one of her child's fathers were there and uh, they're not together. So I thought, oh, well, you know, it's good to see some co-parenting happening during this difficult time. Then at one point, I don't know why she said it to me, but she said, I have never been this stressed in my entire life. I've always been able to provide for my children, but in a few months, if this keeps going, if I can't go find the work, I'm worried about whether or not I'll be evicted. And then she said, I have to pay for babysitters. I have to pay for him to be here and watch his own child. And that was just her being emotional and reacting and venting to me. I had not met this woman for more than half an hour. And when she said that to me, that, that, that lit a fire in me. Because the first quest- question I asked myself is, what man has to be paid to watch his own child, whether he is with the mother or not? That is a failure on every level of a person and what is he teaching his child what what else is he doing with his life because that's not just something somebody needs to be told one day hey come take care of your kid i'll pay you like what other decisions led to that being something where he's like oh yeah that's acceptable right It, it still bothers me i've been thinking about it for days now Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know yeah, where we... to go. I don't know where to go from there. If that one now, now, now I'm just mad, but it's like, you know, if we could, if you, if you can help one child, if you can help one boy become a better man, it's not just going to be his life, which is improved. Right. It's, it is the, uh, It is foundational that we have healthy men, men of of strong character, of love, and of a sound mind. And uh, and those are characteristics that um, if they're not nurtured, if they're not um, built into young men, uh, they don't develop. I mean, part of the part of the curriculum that we're going to be working on with the with the mentorship side of it it's not just going to be like, you know, chopping wood and also like changing oil, but we're going to be discussing things like, because there's going to be times we can't do things outside because the weather, but there's going to be things we're going to discuss like finance, like work, you know, like savings, like charity. Um, You know, when you have a society that works hard, saves as much as they can and gives away as much as they can to charity, you have a society without need. And, um, you know, so we're building that into them. We're going to be talking a lot about self-governance, self-control, uh, patience, respect, and love. Um, you know, so a lot of these things we're going to also be discussing too uh, with them. Uh, so we've got an outdoor curriculum and an indoor curriculum, depending on the weather. And uh, so something I've been working on uh, in my free time. So that's awesome. Well, John, we're, we're running up on time. Uh, 
folks, I'm going to include the link to his crowdfunding campaign in the show notes. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and after this, I'm going to go ahead and contribute an extra $200. So that way you can get the materials and the supplies you need to keep going. And I'm going to make sure to continue to promote it uh, throughout the show and our social media. Whenever you have updates or anything, please just send them to me. But, um, you know, for, for other people, other men throughout their lives, if they want to get more involved in their communities, you know, what, 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 what's your message to people that are called to do something, but they don't know what it is next. They're looking for that moment, kind of like what you had meeting that gentleman that said, Hey, I want to do something that involves boxing and life skills. Yeah. I, you know, it's the, I had a, I had a guy once, uh, you know, in my twenties and in my thirties, I really struggled with, uh, you know, what do I need to do for a job I'm going to be happy at? Because I just I wasn't happy. And uh, he had me take this test and uh, he came back and said, well, John, here's, here's the deal. He's like, your success is based on you getting paid for your ideas. That is your, that is your, like, that is what would make you the happiest. So you need to find a job where they'll pay you for your ideas. And uh, so so that's why I got into consulting, um, you know, eventually, um, and, uh, you know, working with different organizations and whatnot, but for anyone, you know, find out what that passion is. And that, I mean, God's given you that passion because that's what you're supposed to be doing. Um, he didn't give you a passion just to tease you and have you work in a job that you don't want to do. He gave you that passion, that healthy passion, because that's what you're supposed to be doing. And, um, you know, and I think it's too many times we kind of, oh, I can't do that. I can't sing. I can't, you know, I can't go do these things. And if you're good at it and that's your passion, that's what you're supposed to be doing. For me, it's creating things. I love creating. I love, I love putting on events. I love, you know, coming up with programs like a boxing gym and mentorship and creating that. And um, so that's what I would tell someone whatever your passion is, that's what God is telling you to do. If it's healthy, you know, if it's right. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's, that's my advice. Awesome. Uh, John, I, as I mentioned, I'm going to include the link to the campaign in the show notes, but if anyone wants to connect with you, learn more, follow the, you know, the gym's progress and everything, how could they do so? Uh, easiest way. I mean, obviously if you're older, um, you're probably on Facebook. You can look up Kelly Street Boxing Club. Um, we'll probably start doing some stuff on Instagram here soon and some other um, Gen Z uh, apps um, and uh, start promoting out in that, that frame of things. But for right now, what's important for us is to raise the money to get the building where it needs to be and then, um, and then launch the program. And, uh, and then, you know, the launching of the program, obviously we'll, we'll be needing to do a lot more recruiting, uh, for, uh, for new students, um, for each semester. So, yeah. And, and John, you're not asking for like tens of thousands of dollars. You're only asking no. for like a few grand folks. If I, all, if all of you listening could give a dollar, we would have yeah. this whole project funded within a day. Yeah, I've already put in a couple of thousand. I'm just asking for people to help with the next thousand, a uh, couple thousand, and just get that knocked out, because uh, that's going to be the that's how we that's how we do it and get the you know. Uh, I'm not asking them to provide me with an income. I'm just asking them to help you know, sew into the the building and the effort. So. Awesome. Well, John, thank you so much for joining the program today. I'm excited to see. Um, you know, the, the lives that you're going to impact and, you know, another generation of better men who are going to go on and just do amazing things with their lives. It starts with the simple things and whether it's boxing, whether it's basketball, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's learning how to start a fire, ha having, having a positive guiding presence in somebody's life isn't just something that's available to some people. It should be available to all and it doesn't mm -hmm. cost much usually. So God bless you and thank you for what you're doing. Thanks, Remzo. I'll talk to you soon.
Folks, if I could ask one more favor while I'm at it, because I'm always going to be asking for something, please. It doesn't cost you anything, but it means everything to me. Go across Al Gore's amazing internet and leave a five-star rating and review wherever you're listening to the show so we can go ahead and continue to bring conversations like this with John and highlight amazing causes and moments that you could be a part of. As always, I'll be back later in the week. Be safe. Be good. Good night.